cause I'm all about my money. <laughs> yeah, and I don't care what you hate. About my money TV, it's your boy King Chaos, man. Salute to that good guy gang. And what's up to y'all, that money gang. Everybody who likes, share, subscribe, or if you just drop through this channel or you follow us on any platform, you are now part of the money gang. We giving out that money gang, so you the money gang. We not about no violence. We about getting to that bag. So welcome to the money gang. Y'all know what we do on this platform, man. We talk all forms of hip hop. We focus on battle rap. We try to focus on the Midwest. We try to focus on the bars and the positive. But sometimes things happen in the culture that we just have to speak upon. A situation happened yesterday. If you've been in the vlogs, if you're watching the websites, Sue Surf was arrested yesterday by the feds in New Jersey. Yes, legendary battle rapper, influential music, crazy artist, Sue Surf, just did Rolling Loud recently, has been arrested by the feds in New Jersey in his hometown. Um, we spoke about this briefly um, probably last week. There was free Sue Surf and things of this nature going around. And it was just rumored that there was a case, a Fed case, open in New Jersey on Sue Surf. Now, these rumors were later on corroborated by um, a space with Surf and Verb where Surf spoke about the charges and some of the things that he thought were a possibility to come in the future. To my, you know, my favorite adversary spot, you feel yeah. me, to do it, to show how much I f with the culture. I had seen a statement that said, if whoever's going through whatever they're going through, why they so calm? Why the tweeting? Why the spaces? Why the... And I'm going to just say this, and this to my peers, my friends, anybody listening that don't f me anything, it's like, whatever reality you got, you living in it. Like, own your reality, own your life, and own what the f*** you got going on because it's really real life. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not hiding from nothing. I'm not running from nothing. I'm not, you get what I'm saying? My reality is my reality, though. Like, I look up at the ceiling every night, like, verb. I never expect me to have this conversation with you. I know it's left, but you feel me? I just felt like I was going to get it. So I'm going to catch a verb space. I wake up in the, I be staring at the ceiling at three in the morning. I wake up and run to the bathroom and throw up. Not because I ate bad food, not because of, cause of the reality I, I, I'm living in. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Um, like, you know, like you a nigga wake up and like be paralyzed to wake up and be, it's no different. It's no different. You feel me? This is my reality. What Like the one place I'm not going to run from is the place I was raised at. That's why mm. my reality is you might never see me on a stage ever again. Mm. But I'm not running from not, from home. If anybody could reach me, if I might have to pop up and it might be a book page or it might be a, I'm around. And that's just me being 1,000, my dog. No, keep he was going. For, uh, he was asking for positive energy and prayers during that time. He was not incarcerated. Um, unfortunately, yesterday, um, Surf was uh, early in the afternoon. I believe Surf was leaving this building, may have seen uh, seen something. You know, if you know this type of thing is coming and if, you, if you've been in the streets and you know this, this type of thing is coming, you see something crazy, you probably going to duck back in your building and, and, and try to regroup. I believe this is the situation that happened. They said it was a standoff uh, at about 1.30 um, in the afternoon. He... He surrendered peacefully, went in the handcuffs, and surrendered himself to the uh, federalities in New Jersey, where he was uh, then detained in the New Jersey area. Now, the reason why I'm speaking about this is not to highlight any negativity. It's to, it's to actually highlight what the federal law enforcement system and what local law enforcement is now using against rappers. 
I think it's something that needs to be spoke about. We are saying free Sue Surf because what happens is in cases as such as this, which is a RICO case, and we will get into what RICO means and breaking down what that all means because we've seen it and uh, we got Gunna and uh, Young Thug uh, locked up and, and a lot of YSL, um, ESTG out of K uh, Kentucky. His uh, EST uh, crew has been um, indicted. Um, we also seen it with uh, 42 Doug and their crew. It's been a lot of rap artists, crews who have been indicted under a racketeering law. Now, federal racketeering law and state racketeering law is totally different. It's the same law, but the the weight of what can actually happen or the time that can come out of a state is different than what can come out of a feds. And I think that's something that's that should be highlighted here. Surf's charges are federal. And federal racketeering law and what racketeering is is and what 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 it was originally stated to do was to take criminal organizations such as the mafia originally was structured because they could not get caught they were not getting caught on a local level they could um you know a lot of systems was broke down they they you know a lot of a lot of major criminal organizations have police and things of that nature on their payroll so uh, a law was put on the books which was called the RICO law and basically is what it is is racketeering influence and corruption of uh, corrupt organizations so basically it is it's saying that now that any group can become A corrupt organization and they're using this law and they're using this law against rappers and gang members and any organization now and they're targeting hip-hop we need to be more abreast of that as artists as managers as media platform as people in the culture we need to understand these laws and understand how they're going about prosecuting our superstars, our heroes, our legends in the game and calling them basically mob bosses. If you take down a young thug and you put him at the top of a federal racketeering, which is a state at this time, if you put him at the head of a state racketeering charge, then you put him at the top of a pyramid and then you break it down into into all of his sections. And they're using this law against people in the culture of hip hop more aggressively on the state and local level and now on the federal level. They've been doing it as early as uh, rap a lot. Um, uh, they tried to do it with Death Row. Um, they, tried, they did it with uh, Murder, Inc. They basically took murder ink through a two or three year process and and sucked up all the money in the company by taking them through court battles on the federal level they have the resources to drain bank accounts to drain our celebrities our hip-hop legends you know the new and old generation they have the resources to continue to have you in court and make you prove your innocence even if you're if you're not guilty you have to prove your innocence it, it should be innocent until proven guilty but when you go into a federal court system and they have racketeering laws against you then you become responsible for the people that are around you and that is the point in which i want to kind of hit on with a sue surf we have to look at a, the situation at hand what what is the actual charges the actual charges have not been explained yet who else is on the case has not been explained yet and all that will come out in due time but i want to get on the camera and kind of bring light to this is going on 
throughout the culture of hip hop. And to my knowledge, I have not seen it done to any other culture in arts besides hip hop. I haven't seen it done to jazz. I haven't seen it done to um, heavy metal. I haven't seen it done to pop singers. They're putting the stars of hip hop, now a star of battle rap, at the head of criminal organizations instead of the head of companies, which is the job they're actually performing. And we gotta be careful of that. When we when I say money gang, it needs to be understand that we not a gang. We using it as an acronym or as as we do, I'm bad as meaning good. So gang is meaning we all together, not meaning that we're an actual gang. Now they're they're criminalizing the organizations that we know and love as record companies. Now they're criminalizing the actual artists in their LLCs, and that's dangerous. We, we, we got to understand that that's a dangerous walk to take. We got to understand that black men are being targeted even if they're not using their influence for negative. What you did in the past can come back and haunt you, and I think that's, that's, that's clear in a lot of situations. But our past should not always be what's carried, what's carried our past should not always be a dagger or should not always come back to hurt us when it's in the black community. A lot of um, races have came from, you know, criminal backgrounds. A lot of races uh, have came from organizations that have not always been on the up and up, but have built themselves out of that and built themselves to bigger platforms. Sue Surf has did a wonderful job in the last year and a half with Midnight Madness, with bringing the culture together on a lot of different scales. Um, what he did with the meet and greet just at the last Summer Madness. He has been bringing the culture together, not in a criminal way. And now to be indicted as almost a mob boss is almost ridiculous. We need to understand that these laws were set up to take down criminal organizations and now they're taking down record labels and artists as if they were mob bosses. That's a dangerous walk to take. Um, there's a lot of work behind the scenes. I know uh, Jay Z and a lot of uh, a, a lot of you know higher ups in the record companies are trying to get it where they cannot use rap lyrics against young men in the court. No other music is used, or no other form of art is used in court to indict someone. Only in hip hop is this done. Only in hip hop can you be get a federal racketeering case or a state racketeering case that breaks down your whole record label. If we don't get ahead of this, <coughs> excuse me, as a culture, if we don't get behind Sue Surf and if we don't get behind the young thugs, if we don't get behind some of these young men who have getting themselves out of those situations to more positive situations, and say that these people are pillars of the community, they're helping out and they're helping to feed many families with what they do with their art, then we're gonna lose some of the greatest hip hop artists, some of the greatest record companies, and now one of the greatest battle rappers. To me, this is something that we need to be talking about. I'm gonna post on here and it, it'll pop up um, on his Twitter, his mother put out an account where you can actually send in reference levels, character reference letters to the judge and to the federal court system on Surf's behalf. If you're a Sue Surf fan, I encourage you to do that. Um, if, if you're a battle rap fan, I encourage you to do that. If you're a hip hop fan, I encourage you to do that because the way in which they're using the law, I believe is almost criminal. Um, I'm not a lawyer but I do understand what the law does and how the law breaks down criminal organizations. And to say that uh, a battle rapper with an LLC is now a criminal organization is dangerous territory to tread on, and I don't like it at all. Um, I, I didn't want to come on here and talk about the specifics of Sue Surf's case or anything like that. I know a lot of times 
you click on something and it's, and it's you know, all oh, this clickbait. He's not talking about this. He's not talking about that. But what I'm talking about is exactly that. Free Sue Surf, write the reference letters, write the character reference letters, support him in this time if you are a fan of battle rap, hip hop, or the culture, period. Because we're da- we're in dangerous waters if we're taking artists off the street that are helping to feed communities. Because what happens and what has happened in the past when major drug organizations at time have been taken off the streets is now families are left without fathers and now those young men are now left without guidance and are going to be in the streets more violent. I think it's, it's dangerous territory when we say that someone who has a company now has a corrupt organization just because something that happened in his past. That does not mean that his organization is corrupt. That does not mean that the racketeering law fits around what he has done. If you did not catch him doing something, then they can use the racketeering law to say, okay, well, we're going to say someone up under you did something and you, you, you told him to go do it. And now we're going to structure a, a case around that. That's dangerous water. I, I just wanted to get on this camera, you know, and say free Sue Surf. Send the letters. Again, the link is right there. You see the link. Share your share your stories of how Sue Surf has, you know, connected with you. How uh, you know, whatever it may be. If you met him, if you signed the autograph, if he's influenced you in any way, send the character references to the address. Keep up the free suit surf online because we don't wish jail on anyone at About My Money TV. If you've ever been incarcerated, you know there's nowhere to be. And anyone who's been in the federal system will know that you're going to do 80 to 90% of that time. So let me, let, me, let me break this down to you. On the state level, there's usually a two-for-one law. That means for every one day you can get two days credit if you're being good it's called good time it's, it's different in every area but nine times out of ten on a state level a 10-year bid you probably do about five years you can come home and do some you know uh probation parole whatever you may have house arrest things of that nature but you can do about half of that time the federal system however you're going to do 80 to 90 percent of that time and if you get in trouble, then all that good time that you would have got now goes up to 100%. So if you do, if they give you 10 years in the Fed, you're going to do eight and a half years. You're going to do eight years. That's 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 scary for me, and I know that's scary for Sue Surf. I, I heard Surf in the space, um, and I'm sure the Verb space is on a lot of platforms where Surf spoke about possibly having to go through this situation was not sure what what the situation was because when the feds come and get you they have the information but the information is not readily available for you to start to fight the case you only get to fight the case after they come to get you you can't start to fight the case until you know what the case is in front of you so it's it's a very very scary uh, scary thing for black men that are coming out of the ghetto coming out of the inner city bringing their people with them and then to come into a situation where you making a hundred and fifty thousand or fifty thousand a show two hundred fifty thousand a year and now you're looking at a federal case for something that you did 10 years ago five years ago you've changed your life at this point and whatever it was you've gotten past that and they using this law to double back on a lot of young black men and you know brown men whatever it may be we have to be astute we have to be students of the game we have to be students of the law in a lot of situations if you are someone who looks like me or looks like you who are watching this video i wore my original black man matters today because black men matter in the community and black men like sue surf who are influential in his community definitely matter. So shouts out to everybody out there that's going through situations like that. I wish the best for Surf, um, Free Surf, Free Henny, 
and free all those other people that are incarcerated unjustly. We don't know all the search circumstances around what surf is arrested for now. I'm sure all this stuff will come out and it will be, you know, on a lot of channels out there. And I may come back and talk about it, but y'all know how I attack these things. I attack these things tactically. I, I, I don't jump out there. A lot of people spoke on it yesterday. I took my time, sat back, looked at everything in the landscape of what was going on, paid attention. And then I brought you the information that I had today. Not anything new, but I just kind of wanted to break down what's going on. Because to me, this is something that we need to get ahead of as a culture. If you somebody that's influential in hip hop and you have a crew or you have a record label or you have a LLC and you have guys from the hood that are still up under you, we need to make sure that we, we getting each other out of those circumstances circumstances and we're not going back down the roads that we work so hard to get away from it's, it's it's crazy to me that young black men in the inner city work so hard in hip-hop and music to get out of those situations and then federal and state law can come 10 years later <clears throat> after you have changed everything you've done to be a more productive citizen, to give back to the community, and now take you off the streets. So free Sue Surf, free my dog Henny, and free all the other people unjustly incarcerated. Salute from About My Money TV.